Hello everyone, welcome back to the next lecture on the computer network series. We are now in the part 3 of the OSI reference model. Now we will see the outcomes of today's session. Today we will see the remaining 4 layers. In the previous lecture we have seen about application layer, presentation layer and session layer and the services offered by these layers. And today we will see the services offered by transport layer, services offered by the network layer, services offered by the data link layer and the services offered by the physical layer. We will now just have the quick recapture on the OSA reference layers and the services offered by application, presentation and session layers. We have basically 7 layers in OSA reference model. Application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer and physical layer. We have already seen application, presentation and session layers. We will just run through these 3 layers which we have seen in the previous lectures again but quickly. Application layer. When user wants to interact with the computer network, then he opens the application and interact with the computer network or he uses the computer network for doing some activities. So it enables the user to access the network resources through applications. And the services offered by application layer are file transfer and access management, mail services and directory services. The user whatever he works on the system, he opens an application and does the activity. So application layer is the one that directly interacts with the user. We will now move on to the presentation layer. This layer is concerned with the syntax and semantics of the information exchanged between two systems. Suppose if these are the two systems, then the exchange of information is going to be between these two systems. So this layer is related with the syntax and semantics. Syntax means the structure or the format of the data. Semantics means if message has 5 sections and the meaning of each section is decided by this layer only which we normally call as semantics. The services provided by presentation layer are translation, encryption and compression. Translation means if sender is sending some data, so it has to ensure that the same format or the structure is understandable by the receiver that is this device. So presentation layer takes care of this translation part. And encryption is an optional part in the presentation layer. Suppose if this guy wants to send a confidential message to this guy, he don't want others to see this conversation. So what he can do? He can encrypt the content and send. Encryption means converting the original message into a format which others cannot understand except the sender and the receiver. After receiving the message, the receiver does the opposite or the reverse of the encryption process which we call as decryption. And coming to the third service which is compression. It is mainly useful in case of multimedia transmission. Suppose if this guy is sending a multimedia message and this multimedia message normally will have enormous zeros and ones. If we can reduce the number of zeros and ones that are being transmitted significantly, then it is good. Now we will move on to the next layer, the session layer. So session layer establishes, maintains and synchronizes the interaction among the communicating devices. So the services offered by session layer are Dialog control, it means the sender and the receiver are in some kind of relationship and synchronization. So ensuring that the communication is happening perfectly. So far we have seen application layer, presentation layer and session layer quickly. Now we will move on to the next layer, the transport layer. Transport layer, it is responsible for process to process delivery of the entire message. If we say there are two computers that are going to communicate with each other, it is not actually two computers that are communicating. It is the process or there is a process in this computer. It is going to communicate with another process in this computer. Say for example, if this guy is going to send an email, he opens an application, maybe a browser. Let's assume that he is opening Google Chrome and he is accessing his mail in Google Chrome. So that Google Chrome is the actual process he is accessing or the actual application that he is accessing. And each application is assigned by some process numbers by the operating system. And if that process is going to communicate with internet, then the operating system assigns port numbers. If this is going to send the data, so this source port number is attached with the message. So this source port number or this source process is going to communicate with this destination process. Now we will see what are the various services offered by transport layer. The services offered by transport layer are port addressing. We have already seen about port addressing in the previous lecture. I request you to revisit my lecture so that it will give you more idea about this port addressing. 
Suppose when this computer is sending some message, it uses the source port number and sends the data. Upon reception, it is going to reply and that reply is going to be reached by the sender. After reaching this computer, this computer's operating system must hand over the data to the right process. Handovering the data to the right process is done with the help of source port numbers and destination port numbers. So port addressing is one of the services provided by transport layer. And second service of transport layer is segmentation and reassembly. Suppose if this computer has a very big message and if this big message cannot be sent as such. So it can break this big message into smaller messages where each message can be numbered. And after reception of all the individual messages, this computer can reassemble all the message and construct the original data. So this is what segmentation and reassembly. So segmentation and reassembly is one of the services offered by transport layer. And coming to the third service, it is connection control. I have talked about this connection control in the switching techniques part of our series. I request you to watch that part also again. For time being, I will explain it simply. Connection control means between these two computers or between these two devices, whether this is going to be a connection oriented service or connection less service. Connection oriented means before sending the data, connection will be established. Connection less means connection will not be established and data will be sent just like that. Our network supports both connection oriented and connection less services. So connection control is one of the services provided by transport layer. And coming to the fourth service, it is end to end flow control. If the sender is a fast sender and receiver is a slow receiver, so receiver cannot handle that speed. So we are in a need to have a speed matching mechanism where sender and receiver are going to agree upon a common speed matching mechanism so that whatever the sender sends, the receiver is able to receive it without any loss. So this is what we call as end to end flow control. Please note this is end to end flow control. It means this is an end device and this is an end device. This flow control is between end to end devices. And finally, whatever the transport layer constructs, that data it will check for errors. So error control is one of the services provided by transport layer. We don't want the sender whatever is sending if there is some chances for errors to happen here and we don't expect the receiver to take the data because it is not that data which was sent by the sender. It is the data which is erroneous. So we don't want our receiver to accept this data. So error control is actually required to find whether any error is there in the transmission. This error means transmission errors. So far we have seen transport layer. Now we will move on to the next layer, the network layer. Network layer. It is responsible for delivery of data from the original source to the destination network. It is the responsibility of the network layer for delivery of data from the original source to the destination network. So here is the source network and here is the destination network. We will see what are the services offered by the network layer. The services offered by network layer are logical addressing and routing. Logical addressing means IP addressing. So this layer is dealing with IP addresses. So it helps the router to take decision. So when a packet is received by this router, it will have source IP address and destination IP address. So this router knows what is the source of that packet and what is the destination of that packet. So network layer is concerned about routing. Routing means finding the best route for the packet to be transmitted. There will be obviously many routes for a packet to reach the destination and it is the responsibility of the router to find the best route and for finding the best route, it uses IP addresses. So the services offered by network layer are logical addressing and routing. So far we have seen transport layer and network layer. Now we will move on to the next layer, the data link layer. Data link layer. It is responsible for moving the data or frames. We will call the task frames in the data link layer. So it is responsible for moving data from one node to another. We will see an example now. Data link layer is responsible for moving the frames from one node to other node. And the data link layer of this node will forward the data from this node to this node and from this node to this node. Data link layer offers five services, framing, physical addressing, flow control, error control and access control. Framing means the data link layer that is the data link layer of this computer or the node 
It groups the bits of zeros and ones and we call that grouping as a frame. The second service here is the physical addressing. We know very well that every computer is identified with the help of IP address and MAC address and the process is identified with the help of port numbers. So port number related services are handled by transport layer. IP address related services are handled by network layer. So physical addressing or MAC addressing kind of services are done by the data link layer. When the network layer hands over the data to the data link layer, it is the responsibility of the data link layer to port the source MAC address and the destination MAC address so that this intermediary device can take decisions with the help of MAC address also. And coming to the next service which is the flow control. So this flow control is one of the services of data link layer as well as in the transport layer. If this frame is corrupted or lost or damaged, it can be easily identified with the help of error control techniques of this layer. So error control is one of the services offered by data link layer. And coming to the last service that is the access control, when two or more devices are connected to the same link, for example if there is a common link, when two or more devices are connected to that same link, then data link layer protocols are necessary to determine which device has control over the link at that time. Suppose if there are three devices connected to this common link and data link layer only determines which device has control over this line at that particular time. After the time is over, then it means it is the turn of other computer to use it. So data link layer determines which device has control over the link at a given time if it is a common link. So far we have seen the various services offered by data link layer. Now we will move on to the next layer, the physical layer. Physical layer is responsible for transmitting the bits over a medium. So it also provides electrical and mechanical specifications. Let me explain this with an example now. Suppose if there are two computers, say this computer and this computer. After creating the frame, then it is the responsibility of the physical layer to place that frames on the channel or on the medium. So that is what the responsibility of the physical layer. So it is responsible for transmitting the bits over a medium. There are two kinds of medium. One is wired medium, another one is wireless medium. So the physical layer knows what is the kind of medium it has and it sends the data over that medium. It also provides electrical and mechanical specifications. Suppose if the medium is a wired medium, it knows that it has to convert the entire frames or the entire sets of zeros and ones into signals. Say if it is an ethernet cable, obviously it is going to convert that zeros and ones into electrical signals. If it is a fiber optic cable, it knows that it is going to convert that into light signals. If it is a wireless medium, then it knows it is going to convert that zeros and ones into waves. We will now see the various services offered by physical layer. So the services offered by physical layer are, it is responsible for seeing the physical characteristics of the media, representation of bits, data rate, synchronization of bits, line configuration and physical topology. We will now see the first service, the physical characteristics of the media. We know very well that there are two kinds of media, wired media and wireless media. So it knows that what kind of media is connected. So it defines the type of the media, whether it is wired or wireless. And the second service is the representation of bits, that means encoding. Encoding means this physical layer defines the type of encoding, how those zeros and ones are converted into signals. So that is what we call as the representation of bits. The third one is the data rate. Data rate is also called as transmission rate. It means the number of bits sent each second. So that is what we call as the data rate. It is also called as transmission rate. Then synchronization of bits means the clock between the sender and the receiver must also be synchronized. And coming to the next, the line configuration. Line configuration means whether it is a point to point communication or it is a point to multi point communication. Point to point means between two nodes, we will have only one channel or a medium. That medium is exclusively dedicated for these two nodes. If it is a point to multipoint configuration, where that common channel or a medium is accessed or shared by many nodes. So this line configuration is also decided by the physical layer. And coming to the next one, that is the physical topology. 
There are various topologies in the computer network like star topology, ring topology, mesh topology. So this physical topology defines how devices are connected to make a network. So this topology is also addressed by this physical layer. And we have one more services offered by physical layer which is the transmission mode which I have not mentioned here. We know there are three kinds of transmission mode, simplex, half duplex and full duplex. Simplex means data will flow only in one direction. Half duplex means data will flow in both directions but not at the same time. And finally full duplex means two devices can send and receive at the same time. So the services offered by physical layer are physical characteristics of the media, representation of bits, data rate, synchronization of bits, line configuration and physical topology. If you want you can add transmission mode also. Transmission mode means whether it is simplex, half duplex or full duplex. And that's it guys. I hope now you are clear with the services offered by the transport layer, the services offered by the network layer, the services offered by the data link layer and the services offered by the physical layer. I hope the session is informative. Thank you for watching.